In the heart of the Sonora Desert, a cloudy sky hangs over the Phoenix Raceway here in Avondale, Arizona, but that's not going to stop us from having what should be a thrilling race here at this one mile speedway. Welcome to the Phoenix Raceway for the fifth annual Safe Light Auto Glass 500K. We've come to Phoenix every single season, and with this being the final season, we arrive here at this racetrack one more time. First time with the next gen cars, and it should be a very interesting race here in the desert. Hello everyone, joined alongside Derek Hamill for the call of this race. Derek, it's good to have you up here. It's been a hot minute since you've been in the booth. What can we expect here coming into this Phoenix today? This could be a very uh, much different race than what we've come to expect. Well, this track is very, very weird, for lack of a better term. You got the really interesting layout since they moved to start finish line. What we can expect here is hard to pass. We might see some cautions if they get three or four wide, especially going into the new back straightaway. Absolutely. It could be a wild one. Of course, you, you've got to watch out for going through this dog leg because they can fan out three, four, five wide going through there. We've seen it in some of the tests that we've done. So uh, it's definitely going to be an interesting race here in the desert, and we are just about ready to get it going. But first, let's take a look at the top 10 and the points coming in. It is Braden Perez on top of the championship standings, 182 points towards the championship. One win, two top fives, two top tens, and an average finishing position of 11.7. He is four points ahead of Eric Monaco. He is 11 ahead of Andrew Williams. Chase Buck is 14 back. 25 back is Kyle McLeese. 27 back is Brad Stover. 20, uh, 38 back. 30 points back is Brock Nelson. 31 back is both Christian Vargas and Elijah Gordon. And rounding out the top 10, we find Anthony McClure, who won at the bend one week ago. He sits 34 points back after gaining 10 positions in the championship standings. And that's going to do it for the top 10 in the championship. Now let's go down track side. We'll get you the starting lineup and we will get this show on the road here in the Sonoran Desert. And the engines will come to life here at the Phoenix Raceway. 40 going to roll off the pit road. It is Trey Smith on the pole position. Daytona 500 winner and season three champion. Starting alongside John Andrews who has one career win to his name last year at Nashville Super Speedway. Row 2, we find Chase Harrison, 54. He starts alongside Stephen Colon, who's a three-time winner in the series. Harris, a winner at Fontana one year ago. William Brock and Thomas Troxel in the third row. Scott Upton and Paul Antoine Sierra, row 4. Brandon Hayes and Keegan Thompson round out the top 10. We've got everybody rolling off here, I do believe. Derek, who do you think is going to go to victory lane here in the desert? You know, God go with the Gotta go with Chase Harris. You know, he's in a great starting spot right there. I think he's gonna get it done, that 54 machine. Have to see how it goes for him. It's going to be a wild one here at Phoenix in the wild, wild west. The field getting ready to take the green flag and the safe light auto glass 500K is green at the Phoenix Raceway. Around turn three and four, Trey Smith leads the first lap here at Phoenix. Here's Chase Harris going down to the inside. William Brock going to the inside of Andrews behind for third. Chase Harris almost into the lead. They are three and almost four wide behind as Charis moves into the lead in the 54 for the time being. But Trey Smith fighting back on that outside into three. Rounding turn three, going to, towards the start finish line. He Caution's out. Shoot Caution's oh, out in a big incident in turn three and four. Mitchell Collins and Mitchell Henderson. The two Mitchells caught up in this one. And the first caution is out at the tail end of lap number two with Chase Harris, the leader, at the line. There's the pace car making Bonk. its way up to the front of the pack. And we'll get in front of the 54 momentarily. 
No surprise, Mitchell Collins going to come into the pits. Looked like he had a very hard shunt into the outside wall in the third and fourth corner. It's Harris, Smith, Brock, Cologne, and Andrews, the top five, and Derek? Unfortunately, this green flag run comes to an end before it really even got started. Yeah, and Mitchell Collins' forward season just continues. Last in the championship standings coming in, the co-owner for Fitzwater Collins Racing had a winless campaign one year ago, coming off a three-win campaign in 2021. He has been in every single season of competition, although he joined late. He was part of the seven-car expansion at the tail end of the, tw of the uh, early 2020 season. So this is not the way he wanted his day to go at Phoenix, but he's getting back out there just missing the tailgate on that thing. We'll have to see if that really affects his aerodynamics a whole lot. But Chase Harris still leads the way under the caution flag real quick. Let's go back and take a look at what happened to bring out this first yellow flag here in the Phoenix at the Phoenix Raceway in Avondale, Arizona. So watching from overhead as we head off into turn three, Braden Perez and Roberta Crown Jr. diving in on the inside of the two Mitchells and Henderson gets sideways up into Collins. Caleb Rose just gets through, but a heavy, heavy hit to the outside for Mitchell Collins in the 43 and for Mitchell Henderson. They just back it into the wall hard on the outside and that is certainly going to uh, I would imagine affect their aerodynamics for the rest of this race. Collins coming in last in the championship standings. Mitchell Henderson coming in 19th in the championship standings. This is not the kind of run either of these drivers needed. Let's take a look now at full speed. Well, I mentioned in the breakdown for a start of the race, don't want to go three or four wide. They go four wide. Braden for us slides over Roberto County. You're causing Henderson and Collins. The two Mitchells go hard into the outside retaining wall. Both of them keep going, however, which is a good thing, but they're going to be heavily, heavily crippled throughout the rest of the 63-lap event. And they're going to be heavily, heavily angry after that incident for sure. Chase Harris led the field around to the caution flag. He'll lead the field around to the green flag in just a few moments. We'll go. Track is clear. We're good to go. So let's head to the restart now here at Phoenix. Lights are out atop the pace car here at the Phoenix Raceway. Welcome back to Avondale, Arizona as we pass right by Rattlesnake Hill working the sixth lap of the race. Caution coming out of the tail end of lap number two involving the two Mitchells, Henderson and Collins. It is Chase Harris leading the way, Trey Smith second, William Brock, Stephen Colon, John Andrews the top five, then Upton, Truxel, Garcia, Sear, and Lozano the top ten. And Derek, while we come down to the start-finish line, what has got to be going through these drivers' minds? It looked like it was a hectic start to the race, but now we're single file coming down to restart this thing. I'm just thinking, how long can I stretch this car for fuel and tires? About lap 35, 36 when they're projected to come in. I, I think we might see some guys try to stretch that as long as possible. Have to see how it goes. Green flag is out here at Phoenix. Harris and Smith, a great restart. Brock Cologne and Andrews, not as good as they were on the initial start of the race. Here they go into turn number one. Smith trying to get down to the inside. Upton trying to get down low of Cologne. Here comes Trey Smith. Down the back straightaway now. Trey Smith with a run on the inside lane into turn three. Zooming towards start finish line. And coming to finally enough what is considered the front stretch here at Phoenix Raceway. Right here, that little spot, that's the front stretch. And this is considered a shoot after they get through the dog leg into turn number one. Smith trying to get ahead. They are throwing their cars down into one and two. They're making it so far. Smith clears finally for the race lead. This is a very tough track to overtake on, but looks like they're getting it done so far here in the Safe Flight Auto Glass 500K. Chase Harris trying to close back into the back of that 10. Here he goes for another move, heading off into one. Down into one, to the shoot, contact up the oh track. Oh my Chase goodness. Smith. Elbows out, my goodness. Indeed, the Daytona 500 winner Trey Smith holds onto it, but he's not going to be happy about that move at all by Chase Harris. But the Fontana winner from one year ago, Chase Harris moves into the lead. 
Of course, Fontana coming in a couple of weeks. We get this, Willow Springs, and then Auto Club for the West Coast Swing. And then we have Atlanta before we get off for Easter. And we'll be back in Minnesota Motorsports Park for the first time. Meanwhile, behind Ace Garcia getting down to the inside of William Brock. That 52 is looking to turn around what has been a very difficult start to his season. Yeah, he has had some pretty bad finishes. I don't know his exact finishes, but they haven't been that good. I'll tell you, he only has one top five on the season. His only top five was his only top ten. And he's got an average finish of 22 and a half. And he's sitting Jeez. 27th in the standings. He lost 14 spots in the championship after getting caught up in an incident at the bend last weekend. So really, if he hadn't had that bad run, he'd still be up in the top 15 of the championship. But unfortunately, it's not the way it worked out for Ace Garcia. A little further behind, you see three wide action going on. Lozano, Thompson, and Monaco all going at it. Oh, Monaco down oh. to the inside of Thompson. Holds on to it. Wow, that car was sideways. He was dirt tracking it. He absolutely was. Thrilling save there by Eric Monaco. It's out of the inside. Here comes Ace Garcia on Trey Smith. That is for second on the racetrack. And looks like he might just get it. He will through the chute into turn number one. Zooming towards the back straightaway now. And three wide again, a little further back. Monaco down to the inside of Thompson and Dale Lightning. They're still three wide as they head down the back straightaway. Into turn, turn three. three. Thompson. Lightning slides wide on the outside. They are three wide further ahead. Kukulon, Troxel, and Biller all going at it. With Hayes and Stover and Andrews all knocking on the door. Biller slides out wide. Four wide behind as Lozano gets down low. How did they not wreck there going to the backstretch? That was way too close for comfort. And Thompson now back down to the inside of Lozano. Lightning slips out wide. McLeese and Samadio in behind the 23. And Samadio's going to make it three wide through the dog leg. This is all back, by the way. This is all back in about 16th place they're battling for. Now the battle's for 17th. Samadio slips up on McLeese and Lozano. He's trying to get the spot. But McLeese is going to have the advantage through the middle in the Subway Reno. While we're back here, we also need to mention that the points leader, Brandon Perez, had a very bad start. He was starting back in the 38th position. I don't know where he is on track right now. Right now, he is 39th on the racetrack, so not a good oh, run at all for Braden Perez. Here comes Ace Garcia. He's caught Chase Harris. The 54 and 52 about to go at it for the top position. Garcia dives it in mightily, and he'll take the race lead right away from Chase Harris. Chase Harris probably going to conserve his stuff because he knows Ace Garcia is using off his stuff battling for the lead. Meanwhile, there's Scott Upton going down to the inside of Stephen Cologne. Lost a race. One week ago, or two weeks ago, actually, just l really late, actually, to Chase Harris's teammate, Chase Buck. So Upton looking to get some redemption here. After losing a race at a mile, looking to win at a mile today. Probably the more weirder mile as well, which is shocking to say. Absolutely. Absolutely. Ooh, Sierra slides up a little bit into Trey Smith. Yeah. They didn't quite make contact, but goodness, it was close. Paul Antoine Sierra, the Frenchman, still down to the inside of Trey Smith. They're still side by side for the fifth position at the line. It will be the McDonald's Reno of Paul Antoine Sierra for Logan Sport. Up ahead, Chase Harris looking to close back in on that 52 of Ace Garcia. The best running Velocistar car right now as the others got into an incident, actually, one week ago. Mitchell Henderson, 39th. Caleb Rose, 32nd. But they took each other out late on, late in the race when it looked like they were both going to get a top 10. Well, that was just a pure Velocistar moment right there. It's weird saying that through the season that my and Brent team's, Brent's team had last season. But, you know, it's good to make fun of a team that's not my own. <laughs> I guess so. Here's Trey Smith down to the inside of Paul Antoine Sear. Sierra gets ahead of the outside. Cologne now oh. on the outside of almost three wide. William Brock was not able to get down to the inside of the 10 of Trey Smith entirely. But Smith looks like he will get around the 12 of Cologne. That is for fifth on the racetrack for the time being. 
Brock and barely. cautions out. And oh. an incident in turn three and four again. Marty Cicala this time in the Home Depot number 11 for the EL Alpine Racing Team. And Marty's another guy who's had a rough season so far. 31st in the championship coming in after gaining four spots at the bend one week ago. Only has one top 10, zero top fives through the first six races for Marty. And it would not surprise me if he had a little bit of help. Like the skid marks are kind of down. Well, that's not the that's not skid marks. That's oh, just bang. asphalt on the racetrack. And here we go. We're gonna go ahead and get a pit cycle out of the way. And you know this is gonna be really close. The pit line was gonna be right at 35 to f pretty much all the way up to about lap 40 or so. So it is going to be interesting to see what kind of strategies get cooked up now. But Ace Garcia in the entire field coming down into the pit road, and we'll just have to see what strategies get cooked up here, Derek. Well, upon the Larry Mack hat I love wearing in these commentaries. Well, let's look at the trends here. This would be almost a this would be a 41 lap fuel run. This would not be the best thing to do because they're looking at stretching the tires for 41 laps at this track, which due to its awkward shape is almost impossible to conserve tires at and not lose a bunch of spots. Oh, got a car coming out pit road already. That's the 50 Ace Garcia. He's going to win the race off. Chase Harris second, Scott Upton third, Paul Edwards here fourth, Trey Smith fifth, Cologne, Brock, Teague, Stover, and Troxel, the top ten coming out of the pit road. Sebastian Kukulon eleventh, then McLeese, Monaco, Samadio, Biller, the unofficial top fifteen for the time being. We'll let the officials sort the rest of it out. But uh, Ace Garcia leads the field here with 40 laps to go this next time through here at Phoenix. Let's go ahead and take a look at what happened to bring out the second yellow flag of the race here in the Safe Light Autoglass 500K. So watching from overhead, heading off into turn number three once again, it's Caleb Rose down to the inside of Marty and a huge dive. That's twice in the last three weeks that Marty has had uh, been involved in an incident that involved getting turned or turning somebody and he, he turned Keegan Thompson around at Rockingham, who came up, and then Thompson cleaned him out in the process and took out two other cars at the same time. And this time, Caleb Rose just absolutely pile drives Marty Sakela heading off into that third turn. Thankfully, it doesn't look like a, a very big impact for the driver of that 11 car. He should be able to go on all right. Let's take a look at full speed. Well, Caleb Rose... You know you're, you're a good man, buddy, but you just completely just cleaned out Marty up the track into the wall, spins around once, maybe a half a time, gets passed by every car on the track, keeps it going, though. He's going to be decently damaged, but he should still have a bit of mouse speed in that Alpine. Feelings are definitely going to be interest after that one for sure. Lace Garcia gets the caution flag. He's going to leave the field around momentarily. Track is clear. We're good to go. So let's head to the restart once again here at Phoenix. And we're back at the Phoenix Raceway in Avondale, Arizona, passing by Rattlesnake Hill once again. Welcome back to the Phoenix Raceway, where you're working lap 24 of si 25, rather, of 63 here in the Safe Light Auto Glass 500K. Ace Garcia leads the way. Chase Harris second. Scott Upton, Paul Antoine Sear, Trey Smith, the top five. Caution coming out for an incident involving Marty Sakela. Will Parrish, the only car not on the lead lap for the time being. One lap down here under this caution flag. If another caution comes out. Remember, he can get the wave around to get back on the lead lap here it, at Phoenix. Ace Garcia going to lead the field around. Derek, will go ahead and let you bring us to the restart here at Phoenix. We're the Geico restart zone going up through the five gears in these cars back green here at Phoenix. Ace Garcia through the front straightaway onto the chute now. He has a slight advantage over Chase Harris. Harris staying right behind Garcia in the Monkey Buck Racing 54. There's three wide going towards the back straightaway now. Looks like Brock will get ahead from it over the 97. The powering machine can't think of drive off the top of my head. It's Colin Teague in the 97 diving it in. The NS Blackout Motorsports Nissan Altima side by side now just ahead of them. Trey Smith and Paul Antoine Sear. That is for the fourth position on the racetrack. Garcia got a whale of a restart ahead. Chase Harris and Scott Upton second and third. Cologne slides wide a little further back. 
Now William Brock back down to the inside of Colin Teague as Mitchell Henderson is down in the pits. One of the Velocistar entries. And Will Parrish oh. is down in the pits as well. Another Fitzwater Collins car looks like has gotten into trouble. Mitchell Collins already was in an incident, and now Parrish falls two laps down, and Roberto Crown Jr. is also in the pits. What in the world is happening? A lot of, he, started, he started in last place in this event. A lot of issues going on with these drivers, goodness sakes. I mean, stuff happens in the desert, I guess. Up this to is now. This is certainly a very tough racetrack when it comes to machinery. But Upton did not get going well out of turn number four. Got down to the inside of Chase Harris. Oh, and now oh, Trey wow. Smith into the side. We're three wide for the third position. Trey Smith barely holds on to it. What a save by the former series champion. Paul Antoine Sierra trying to get to the inside of both of them. But the order remains the same as Upton holds on to the outside and now tries to chase down the 54 of Chase Harris once again. Talk about their traffic. Second time I've said in the race, I do not care. That was freaking amazing. Now Smith's looking to pass up. And caution is out once again. Oh. And I believe, I believe it might be. Well, I'm not oh. sure. We'll take a look in just a second. It, oh, it's over in turn three and four again. I believe it may have been. Just looking at some of the cars that were slower, I believe it may have been the 46 of uh, Alejandro Cruz Jr. Maybe he had something to do with it. But the caution is out again here at Phoenix, the third time here. Hitting and again. why not go ahead? We'll make sure we'll make it to the end this time. We are at 33 laps to go, and of course lap cars can't come into the pits. This time through, they have to come down the next time. I'm at a loss for words on what's happening. Once again, like as I mentioned last round of pit stops, they're going to be going about 41, 42 laps on those tires. Looks like they want to try to get every chance they can get to get a fresh pair of good Eager Eagles on those machines. Michelin's actually here in oh, the Michelin's. Trinity River Cup Series. It's Ace Garcia with a quickie. Looks like he just got a splash of fuel, and he's going to navigate his way out of the pits. But he got held up, and that allows Chase Harris to win the race off of the pit road. It's Harris first, Ace Garcia second, Trey Smith, Scott Upton, and Paul Antoine Sierra, the top five. And actually, I think it's going to be Trey Smith, I believe, ahead of Ace Garcia, actually. We'll wait to see what the officials decide the standings to be here under this caution. They're going to wave Ace Garcia around the 10. And so Trey Smith will be third. And, of course, we'll wave around the 3, the 53, and the 02 in just a moment. That uh, will put Mitchell Henderson back on the lead lap. Roberto Crown Jr. will be one lap down, and Will Parrish will be two laps down as a result of this caution flag. The caution coming out for an incident up in turn 3 and 4. Once again, it's been Calamity Corner all day. Let's go ahead and take a look at what happened this time. So, overhead, watching as they head down the back straight away. Thompson is low, Cruz is in the middle line, runs into the back of the 23, and Cruz pushes that 23 Mac Tools Toyota around. Thompson sideways up into the wall. The outside, they both go very, very hard. I don't know what in the world Alejandro Cruz was doing there, but uh, they say rule number one in stock car racing is to learn how to wreck someone without wrecking yourself. Apparently somebody didn't tell that to Alejandro Cruz. Let's take a look at full speed. Well, as Josh mentioned, rule number one star crazy. and learn how to wreck someone wrecking yourself. Alejandro Cruz does not know that. Just completely cleans out Keegan Thompson. Both go pretty hard into the retaining wall. Cruz keeps going. Thompson does a little bit of left, right, left, right with the wheel. Gets back going. He has to be very, very angry with Alejandro Cruz Jr. in that monkey buck racing 46. Oh, I, absolute, I absolutely would be, and I could totally understand his frustration. But again, Ace Garcia lead the field around to the caution flag, but he's not going to lead the field to the green flag. Chase Harris beat him off of the pit road, and he will lead the field to the green flag momentarily. And, uh, well, you know, Alejandro Cruz really should have taken Landon Castle's advice. Yeah, again, the, the wrecking someone without wrecking yourself advice, not the cryptocurrency advice. But anyway, yeah. track is clear. We are good to go. So let's head to the restart here at the Phoenix Raceway. And we're going to come back out of the caution break now. Thomas Troxel 
who was running up in the seventh position. Pacific Hamill Racing driver has blown something under the hood of that Toyota Camry. And Troxel, who was having probably his best run of the entire season, will fall out with 31 laps to go here in the Safe Light Auto Glass 500K. Unbelievable. Pacific Racing Engines up in smoke. The most iconic duo we've ever seen in NR Offline Racing. Unfortunately, the curse looks like it has carried over to this season as we get the one to go here at Phoenix Raceway. And it is a blown engine on the 62 of Troxel. And he will be relegated to a 40th place finish as now Ace Garcia has gotten into trouble. Maybe he has a tire going down. But second place, Ace Garcia, who's been one of the fastest cars all day long. Now Velocistar's found trouble. Wow. <laughs> we have the... It's... It's... It's just the two Stooges out here. Pacific Hamill Racing and Velocistar having issues. They go hand in hand. We're coming to the green. Apparently. Goodness sakes. It's been the story of the seat. It's been the story of your teams this year. So far, well, PHR has been doing pretty good. Velocistar, yeah. not so much. But uh, Ace Garcia, that is so unfortunate. I don't think he's going to fall out of the race as a result of this. It looks like it's just going to be a tire. We'll have to wait and see. But unfortunately, Thomas Troxel, he is out of the race, and he's the only one out of the race for the time being through the Geico restart zone. Chase Harris takes the green flag once again with 29 laps to go here in the desert. Oh, big slide! Trey Smith trying to get to the inside, not quite able to. I'm still trying to club himself for the caution period. <laughs> okay, so Trey Smith, he nearly got now. He's going to be under attack from Scotty Upton in the 78 Verizon 5 G Machine. And behind, we are two and three wide heading into the dog leg. Here's Upton down to the inside of Trey Smith. They're trying to take the, the second position away from the season three champion and in behind three wide Colin Teague Kanan Miller and Stephen Cologne going after it that is for fourth Teague stretches away they're still side oh. by side for second oh. and up oh. in the wall a big wreck incident Kanan Miller 81 into the wall season two champion and the caution will come out for the fourth time oh my goodness you know, we said during the breaks this would be an interesting race. Oh, this is pitting! Oh, no! And Harris is going to pit from the lead. I don't know why, though. What in the world is going on? What so we just that? saw Ace Garcia go into the pits. Now we're seeing Harris go down into the pit road. And Kanan Biller, I would imagine, nope, he's going to stay out on the racetrack. It looked like he got up in the wall, but I don't know if he oh, sustained Thibodeau's much damage. Now, Thibodeau, is he in trouble now? Oh that my. That's two Pacific Hamel racing cars in just a handful of laps that have potentially found trouble. As he when is riding on the apron. Unbelievable. I am. I am flummoxed. What? And there's Chase Harris waiting in the pits because he has to wait on the pit road for the field to go by before he can get back out. And there he goes. He'll file in behind the 52 of Ace Garcia. A wild one here in the wild, wild west of Phoenix Raceway. The Safe Light Auto Glass 500K. This is certainly not the Phoenix we have known the last few seasons. But let's go back and take a look at what happened to Kanan Biller to bring out this, the fourth caution of the race in the desert. So watching from overhead, Stephen Colon with a big dive on the Season 2 champion Kanan Biller into the back of the 81, turns the Ford, the Bush Light Ford sideways up into the wall and every single incident that's happened, it's been over in turn 3 and 4, absolutely calamity corner heading off into turn number 3. Thankfully, not a whole lot of big incidents over there, just a few one or two car spins, but Kanan Biller, uh, the fourth car, the fourth incident today, 
at the Phoenix Raceway. And unfortunately, it's going to set him behind the eight ball. A struggle of a season continues for the season two series champion. Let's go ahead and take a look at full speed. Well, we mentioned Alejandro Cruz not taking Landon Castle's crashing advice, but Stephen Cologne did right into Caden Biller, stealing him up into the outside retaining wall, does a spin, keeps it out of everybody's way, which is a good thing. That would have been a hard lick out of that out of that corner. Keeps it going, though, but he will obviously be really slow with the heavy damage on the back end of the 81 machine. I believe that's a Fitzwater Collins entry. Yes, it is, and it looks like all three of their cars have found trouble today. The 0 2, the 43, and now Kanan Biller finds trouble. Difficult day for Fitzwater Collins Racing, that is for sure. But field is in the hands of Scott Upton. They will lead the field to the green flag momentarily. Track is clear. We're good to go. So let's head to the restart once again here at Phoenix. And with 24 laps to go, we welcome you back once again to the Phoenix Raceway, working the fourth caution of the race and a crazy turn of events under the last caution, coming to get the green flag, and then Kanan Biller getting spun around to bring out this, the fourth caution of the race. It is now Scotty Upton leading the way for Team Ninja Rapids. Trey Smith is second, Colin Teague third, Sear, Cologne, Monaco, Samadio, Brock, Hayes and Nelson, the top 10. Derek, just thoughts on what we have seen so far in this one. I can't comment on without saying a certain French curse word that only one person would understand, besides myself. That's all I can say about what's what's transpired within these last few laps. Absolute madness. We'll just leave it at that then. Green flag is back out here at the Phoenix Raceway. 23 laps to go. Teague with a dive on Trey Smith. Cologne with a dive on Paul Antoine Sear. With the run on the inside on Smith, he's going to lose some track position there. Oh, Sierra looking low on that. The EEL Alpine entry. That's Stephen Cologne in the 12, drafting up to the back of the 97 of Colin Teague. Fanning out two and three wide once again, going through the dog leg and into the first turn. Cologne down to the inside of Teague, easily into the third position. Down the back straightaway now. They, it's all Scotty Upton, Trey Smith and Cologne follow him behind. Sierra looks underneath Teague. He's gonna have a run going into the front straightaway on the way to the shoot now. And through the dog leg, Stephen Cologne down to the inside of Trey Smith. That is for second and almost by cleanly, but now we'll clear the 10 and set his sights on the 78 of Scott Upton. They continue to lead the way, but now have to look in their mirror as a hungry Stephen Cologne, who's not won since Homestead of 2021. It's looking to end the winless skid in points races. We got two Reynolds right up front while they're being driven by good buddy Cookie. He, he can drive, he can wheel these things. Vince says 2021 at home, so like you mentioned, one of, since he won a points race, you gotta think it's coming Oh my soon. gosh. Oh heavens. Now they get it out of four wide, thank goodness. Trey Smith down to the inside of his teammate William Brock and reigning series champion Nicholas Samadio. They get through there, thank goodness. Back up ahead is a three car battle about to manifest for third between Sear, Teague, and Smith, Sear slips back from the 10 a little bit. Colin Teague trying to make it a battle for fourth. Teague trying to get by Sierra. Oh Sierra my! Ooh, he slid in. Ooh. Big Sierra to the slide. basement. Not quite able to get by Trey Smith though. Trey Smith is fighting back on the outside lane. And we'll see. Oh, Stover a big dive on Eric Monaco behind. And now he'll set his sights on his teammate, Brandon Hayes. Oh, man. Dover. He's setting his sight on that beautiful 84 Ken Block tribute livery. Rest in peace, Ken Block. Brandon Hayes out here running well in those colors. Paul Antoine Sear, third, trying to hold on to that spot. Trey Smith and Colin Teague in behind him, crowding him down to the inside is up front. 
Upton and Cologne have gotten away, but Cologne is waiting for just the right moment to make a move for the lead. He's taking a dive down to the inside. Here he goes. Lap Not quite able to. Lap 48 begins with the leader side, nearly side by side. Upton able to gain some valuable position on the track. Ooh, Cologne slides up a little bit. He's going to be trying to get to the outside, maybe. That would probably be his best bet over in that turn, especially when the tires really rubber into this racetrack. This is one of the longest green flag runs we've had so far in this race. Here he goes down to the inside of Upton, side by side for the lead. Through the front straightaway into the dogload now, onto the chute. Cologne has run the inside. He is clear of Upton. Upton oh, crossed over by Upton down to the inside. How about this? What a move by Scotty Upton, but Cologne's gonna have the outside lane. He's gonna have to run through turns three and four and on to the front straightaway. What an exchange that was Stephen Cologne. Another lead change here at the Phoenix Raceway. Now a quarter second ahead of that 78, Paul Antoine Sierra, second and a half behind in the third position. He might need a caution to catch back up to the leaders. Here's Elijah Gordon on the charge. He's trying to get a two-for-one special on, on both of the Polar Star cars. But Brandon Hayes crosses out of the inside. He's going to be pinned in between oh. them. Oh, my goodness. Ken Block would be proud of that move. Holy Moses. That was an incredible move by Brandon Hayes. Now Trey right down to the inside in the 95. Colonel Sanders into the seventh position for the time being, but now Gordon fights back on the outside into turn three. He'll cross down to the inside of Brandon Hayes. Hayes on the outside lane. He's got a decent run going into the front railroad, but Gordon has third line going through the dog leg. He's going to get that position from Brandon Hayes and Trey Wright right behind the 76 machine. And Wright still trying to stick it on the inside. Hayes with a run on the outside out of turn number two. And now Hayes down to the inside of Gordon heading off into turn number three. Ooh, Hayes with a good run. He's got the third lane to the dog leg just like Gordon had the previous lap. He's got the run through the chute now into turns two. This is a battle for fifth place on the racetrack by the way. Guard, uh, Gordon on the outside. Looks like he's going to hold on to the spot up ahead. It is Stephen Cologne leading the way, but Upton is closing in. Cologne is painting that yellow line through turn number four into turn one after front straight and now onto the chute once again. Cologne has opened up a bit of a gap. Looks like about a third of a second betwixt him and Scotty Upton. Upton trying to do everything they can to close in. Coming in 26th in the championship standings. Steven Cologne coming to this race 23rd after losing 11 spots last week at the bend. Looking to rebound and make his team owner, Ethan Lewis, proud. The gap stays about the same as it did the last time by. Cologne absolutely came that line going on to the back straightaway. He knows how to drive this place, it seems. The tires are really, really starting to rubber into the racetrack now. It's going to get increasingly harder to catch up and overtake somebody. Now, six tenths of a second, the difference between Cologne and Upton as behind Sam Adio and Monaco get around the 99 of Brad Stover. That battle is for eighth place on the racetrack right now. Here is Eric Monaco going down to the inside of Sam Adio. Monaco could very well end up with the points after today with Brandon Perez having a very bad race. He's third near the back at 38. Looks like he's still in the 30th. 30th place right now. But still, yeah, Eric Monaco is in position to retake the points lead. Stover, big dive on the inside of the 25, though. We may have spoke too soon. Oh, boy, this is getting a little bit dicey. And Stover's going to get the run of the inside going. Brock Nelson's going to try to make it four wide. Thought better of it. Now they'll be two by two battling for that eighth position. Real quick, we'll check in up front. The lead still belongs to Stephen Cologne. Scott Upton second, but we watch the battle now for the eighth position. Man, the, we could be having Fox camera moments right now, but we are not. Brad Stover on the inside of them. I believe that's San Mateo? 
Nicholas Samadio, yes, the 98, correct. With Brock Nelson, the 73, right in behind Trey Smith, who got shuffled back a little earlier on. Now he's trying to work his way back up into the top 10. Oh, here comes Caleb Rose into the picture now. The only Velocistar car to not have an issue this race, funnily enough. He's got to run underneath Trey Smith through to the back straightaway now. He needed something to go his way. He's 34th in the championship standings coming into this race. Rose now just in the 12th position now, trying to crack the top 10. He's got Trey Smith and Brock Nelson ahead of him that are 10th and 11th as Nelson goes down to the inside of Stover. That is for 9th. Meanwhile, up front, there's about two third of a second lead for Stephen Cologne on Scotty Upton. I think it's Colin Dog's fault to fire at this point. Coming to three to go. Three. The safe light. Autoglass 500K. Safe light Autoglass 500K. Yes, indeed. This race named for an experience I had in Phoenix, Arizona, where we were road tripping through the Sonoran Desert on Interstate 10, and a piece of glass came up from a semi truck, hit the windshield. And we stopped in Phoenix, and Safe Light came in clutch and fixed the windshield, and we made it to Tucson still before the sun went down. So they are awesome. Absolutely amazing. Go. So we got them the namesake of this race for that experience as two laps to go. Stephen Cologne continues to lead. Scott Upton, 61, one hundredths of a second behind the 12, and lap traffic ahead could potentially help Stephen Cologne or hurt him. That is a teammate, Marty Sakela, as we come around for the white flag. Stephen Cologne, one mile away from career points win number four. Oh, going through the dog leg, down to the inside. That's going to be it. Easily Could around be. Marty Sakela. By his team, he got to think Marty let him by. Good friend Cook, Stephen Cologne. Going down the back straight for the final time here in Phoenix, Arizona. Well, Avondale technically through turns number three and four. Come on, Josh. He's going to get it. Stephen Cologne, the winless streak, comes to an end of the desert. He wins the Safe Light Auto Glass 500K. And what a thrilling race it has been. Just under a second ahead of Scott Upton, Paul Antoine Sear third. Colin Teague, Elijah Gordon, the top five, and he will immediately come down into the pits. And Stephen Cologne will be welcomed by his crew, a winner for the first time with Renault, for the first time with EL Alpine, and a little extracurricular activity over in turn two with Chase Harris. Basically sums up the kind of day he has had. But Stephen Cologne comes home a winner in the desert for the first time since September of 2021 down into his stall he will go a winner for the fourth time in his trinity river cup series career he's won at dover he's won at nashville he won at homestead and now he's got a mile phoenix to his credit another mile i should say but a very unique racetrack to get it done at. 0.974, he finishes ahead of Scott Upton. An average race speed of 105.946 miles per hour. Sear third, Teague fourth, Gordon Hayes right, Nelson 70 and Stover. The top 10 getting through the rest of your finishing results here. 36 cars finishing on the lead lap for this race. Sakela Parish Crown finishing one lap down. Thomas Troxel, unfortunately, the only one not able to finish. He had a blown engine earlier on in this race. Derek, what a wild, wild race here in the wild, wild west. Go ahead and just try to sum up what all we have seen today just kind of explain your thoughts well i mean my thoughts are it's wild we had our man cookie win a race first time september 2021 20, i'm sure ethan's gonna be dancing a freaking jig when he sees this race go up man i'll bet he will what a wild one indeed and just thoughts also kind of going into the rest of the West Coast swing here before we get to the one week break after Atlanta. We've got Willow Springs, we've got Auto Club, and then we have Atlanta Motor Speedway before we get one week off at Easter. What what do you got to do now through these next three races before you get to the break to kind of set yourself on the path to 
potentially a championship contending season going forward. Well, at least I know I'm going to be telling Brad hypothetically here. Have a championship mindset going to Willow Springs. It's a very interesting road course. It can be challenging, just like this track is, because it's kind of goofy in the same in a similar way. That indeed it is, and it's going to be a interesting race to be sure. We're looking forward to it. My thanks to Derek Hamill for coming along for the call of this race. We will see you next week in Rosemond, California, at the Willow Springs International Raceway. Until then, one more congratulations to Stephen Cologne, and uh, we will see you next week at the fastest road in the West. Until then, y'all take care, stay safe, and have a good one.